Welcome back. We have been tasked by Starfleet to take over from the USS Hurd to investigate the Antares Rift. So before we do that, of course, we should probably um, investigate those things, if I can spell them right. Antares Rift. An area of unstable space near the star Antares. Little is known of its properties. There have been numerous disappearances in this area. Sounds like a kind of space Bermuda Triangle. Except weird anomalies in space that make starships disappear are so common on Star Trek that it's not very hard to believe. Um, we can also look up Admiral Richards, who told us to go here. I thought we could. Chris Richards. There we go. Starfleet rank, field admiral. Current assignment, chief of Starfleet operations. While captain, served as commander of the USS Gallant. Also served with James Kirk aboard the USS Stalwart. Um, I think the text of a completely unrelated entry is appended to the bottom of this for some reason, although there's no speech for it. Rigelian fever. Okay. Don't think that's related to Admiral Richard, unless he has it, which, I don't know, it's possible, but seems unlikely. See what Spock has to say about this. The Antares Rift. It should be a most interesting assignment. How so, Spock? There have been several attempts to chart it. All expeditions into the Rift vanished without a trace. But those expeditions were years ago. Our starships are far more capable than they were during the time of those attempts. Captain, a ten-year-old child is far more capable than a three-year-old child. But there are many problems that neither child can solve. You sure seem to have a lot of faith in our abilities. It does seem kind of silly to keep sending ships when, you know, they're disappearing. Maybe we should try a probe or something? I'm just gonna assume that they have tried that and everything just keeps failing. Let's hope we'll fare better anyway. Alright, anyway, we should probably actually go there. I believe it is number 15 on the map, which is over here. I guess this red nebula thing is the rift. Captain's log, stardate 6257.6. We have entered the Antares Rift and found spatial disruptions in the rift that make using warp engines extremely dangerous. Repairs are almost complete on the minor damage we suffered upon entry into the rift. We are continuing our survey using impulse engines. My poor babies. Warp engines were meant to be used, Captain. Communications are back online, Captain. Deflectors at 93% power and increasing. Captain, undoubtedly, that phenomenon would explain many of the strange disappearances in this sector. Still, with our warp engines deactivated, our computers indicate we will be safe. Famous last words, it seems. Communications are out again, Captain. Is anyone hurt? If you as human, Mr. Spock's pride might be... Captain, sensors failed to indicate anything unusual prior to the explosion. I would speculate that it was caused by an extremely unusual rift in the space-time continuum. A place where radically different physical laws apply. And since it was different space-time, our sensors weren't programmed to detect it. And it could happen again at any time without warning. Well, that sounds like fun. Looks like we've got some uh, damage being shown on the monitors. Let's see if we can do anything about this, though. The damage readout for the Enterprise has gone crazy. There are obviously problems with the ship's damage registers. Or we really have crazy damage. It's entirely possible. The damage readout for the... 
This door leads to the turbo lift. Indeed it does. It's also the only door on the Enterprise Bridge. Ship's short range sensor display for the science station. Now all it is displaying is static. Ship's long range sensor display for the science station. Now all it is displaying is static. Is that what those displays are? I never knew. Mr. Scott's home away from home, AKA engineering. This allows access to some of the more important engineering functions from the bridge, most notably damage control systems and emergency power and internal sensors. Mr. Scott wonders how he'll look like a miracle worker this time. I'm sure you'll get a chance considering our current circumstances. Ensign Walker came to the bridge to discuss discrepancies in the last damage control report. He now wishes he was elsewhere. I don't know that elsewhere is necessarily safer in the current circumstances. Mr. Scott's home away from home. I guess this entire console has that description. Mr. Sulu has complete faith in his captain, who has gotten them out of worse predicaments than this. That he has. This is the ship's helm station. From here, the helmsman can control the ship's shields and its orbital heading. James Kirk worries about the safety of his ship. Doesn't he always? This seems pointless. Mr. Chekhov sometimes wishes he had a safer occupation, like handling antimatter. <laughs> this is the ship's navigation station. This is Chekhov's pride and joy, allowing him to enter the ship's headings and to prepare the weapons in the Enterprise's fortunately few space battles. Is fortunately few a reference to the uh reduced number of battles in this game compared to the previous one. I wonder. This is the second time that hailing frequencies have gone down today. Lieutenant Uhura is not having a good day. Yeah, we're not talking to anybody without our communication systems working, which might be a problem. If something happens, we can't even tell Starfleet what was going on so they can avoid the same mistake next time. The communication station. This is where Lieutenant Uhura is normally located. Mr. Spock is trying to determine a way to detect the rifts before the Enterprise is destroyed. This is the science station, where Spock scans anomalies and operates the ship's library computer. All right, let's get some uh, opinions. I don't think we actually have any inventory right now. No, we don't. So we cannot scan anything. So let's just talk to our crew and see if they can give us some insight on the situation. Scotty, what's our status? Very bad, Captain. Whatever hit the Enterprise hit us right in our own neighborhood. The hull is breached six meters from the bridge. Beyond that, the instruments are useless. I can't read or send anything through these controls. We'll need a starbase to make this bridge functional again. Scotty, how about auxiliary control? Captain, I cannot determine the status of anything beyond the place where the rupture occurred. The rest of the ship could be dead as far as we know. Well, let's hope it's not, because if the bridge isn't working and the rest of the ship is dead, we are out of luck, aren't we? Ideas, Mr. Walker? I'm a security guard, sir, not an idea man. Still, if we could send out probes to detect these rifts, we might get a better idea on whether they're moving or not, and whether we should stop and make repairs or keep moving. That's not a bad idea. I don't know if we can launch probes right now. But if we could, it would not be a bad idea. Status, Mr. Sulu. Helm is not responding, Captain. The controls are completely dead. We need to make communicating with the rest of the ship our first priority. That would be useful, yes? Status, Mr. Chekhov. Captain, navigation is not responding. The circuits are as lightless as a Stalinist. Okay. Any ideas, Lieutenant? I was barely able to reroute the necessary connections last time, Captain. Communications are completely useless now. We may be able to enter codes into the library computer and instruct others to send messages to us. That's an interesting idea. 
Can you do anything with that, Mr. Spock? Captain, I believe I may be able to adjust the sensors to detect these spatial rifts and pilot the Enterprise to avoid them. However, the sensors are too heavily damaged here. I will need to get to auxiliary control as soon as possible if I am to reroute the necessary systems. Mr. Spock, the bulkheads were breached just outside of the bridge. No one's going to be able to leave the bridge for at least an hour unless they're transported out. That seems like a bad thing. Captain, I believe I may be able to... Oh. But maybe we can uh, at least use Uhura's suggestion. Let's see what Spock can do with his computer. Captain, the library computer is online. Apparently, its circuits were shielded from the explosion. Captain, I have managed to program a message into the library computer. The first time a person accesses the computer, they will read our distress signal. Hopefully, they can code a reply into the computer, which we can access. That would be uh, useful, yes? Let's do this again. Captain, the transporters are operational. I request permission to be transported, so I can begin the adjustments to sensors as soon as possible. Go ahead, Spock. No, Spock, I'll go first. Go ahead, Spock. I think it makes more sense for Spock to go. No, Spock, I'll go first. Also, I think if you do this, Spock will still go. Go ahead, Spock. Spock! That's not normally how the transporters work. Let's hope um, we didn't just disintegrate Spock. Also, what was that four-armed thing we just saw? All the more reason for us to find a way to get off the bridge. Mr. Scott wonders how he'll look like a miracle worker this time. Oh, I meant to talk to them again, not look at them again. Captain, this bridge is useless. For our own sake, as well as Spock's, we have to find a way to get out of here. Captain, that thing with the four arms wasn't... Mr. Spock, was it? That beam wasn't some sort of transmutation beam, was it? I don't think so, Mr. Walker. But the two have to be connected. Yes. I don't think that thing was Mr. Spock, but he probably had something to do with Spock's disappearance. The controls are still not functioning, Captain. Spock, what happened to him? Good question. Captain, what was that thing? I don't know, Mr. Jagoff, but I intend to find out. Captain, we need to get off the bridge. I recommend we keep monitoring the science station and see if anyone answers our messages. You are full of good ideas today, Lieutenant. Well, since Spock's not here, uh, somebody else will have to do it, but we can, in fact, use the science station again. I can take care of that, Captain. I'm patching your log into the computer. You should have voice messages. Captain, we've managed to jury-rig an evacuation tube through the bridge turbo lift. We should be able to keep it stable long enough for you to be evacuated. Okay, looks like we have a way out. Through the turbo lift. Which is the only way out, so that's a good thing. Let's see if we can leave. So now we get to explore the Enterprise, kind of like uh, exploring the Republic in the previous game, except this time it is the actual Enterprise and not just another Constitution-class ship. It's also in a lot better shape than the Republic was. As there is some damage, it's not like completely blown to smithereens like that ship. Let's see, we're at the bridge. We can go to Auxiliary Control. The sick bay, transporter room, and engineering. Well, auxiliary control is where we need to go to get control of the ship back, since the bridge is useless. So that seems like a good place to start. Captain's log. After equipping ourselves with tricorders and phasers, we are now searching for a way to find Spock and return him to us. I've determined that the best place to start Thing we took 
of the warp engines offline. How bad is it, Scotty? That explosion was 42% stronger than the one that struck near the bridge. Our left warp nacelle is crippled, Captain. I hope it's not a trend. Keep me posted to Mr. Scott Kirk out. Yeah, if this keeps happening, it could be very, very bad. This seems pointless. No room descriptions in this mission, it seems. The doorway to the turbo lift. The doorway to auxiliary control. The way into auxiliary control is open, Captain. Well, that's good, at least. Turbo lift monitor. It says that the turbo lift is on the auxiliary control deck. That's because we were the ones who used it last, uh, last, I guess. This screen shows the layout on this deck. The door directly ahead of you leads to the auxiliary control. Considering there's only two doors, I don't think we really need a layout for that. The deck integrity monitor. Nothing on this deck has been damaged. Yet. Well, that's good. James Kirk wonders about his friend Spock's safety. As do I. Hikaru Sulu has seen more than one attempt by aliens to take control of the ship, and they've always failed. I think Sulu's first name wasn't officially established until the movies, was it? Of course, that doesn't mean we can't use it now, since this game was made after the movies, and presumably his name was actually always that, so... Pavel Chekhov is a little nervous right now. Angus Walker wonders how they're going to remove the aliens this time. We left the bridge with everybody, but it seems we only have uh, Sulu uh, Chekhov and Ensign Walker with us. I guess that Uhura and Scotty went elsewhere. We can talk to everybody, of course. I could use advice. Suggestions, anyone? Spot. I know, Captain. We miss him, too. Uh, that must be something he's really used to doing, asking Spock for advice. Well, they say the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. What does that mean, Solo? That we should have been more vigilant? How could we, if the sensor said nothing? Well, maybe if Starfleet sensor designers would be quicker to modify their sensors to react to new phenomena. You two are as bad as Spock and McCoy. <laughs> Seems like it. I'd feel more comfortable, Captain, if we knew what happened to Mr. Spock. As would I. Awaiting orders, Captain. It's nice that we get some um, more unusual members on... Well, it doesn't really count as an away team if we're still on the ship, does it? On our mission crew, I guess. Instead of always having Spock and McCoy, we now get to have Sulu and Chekhov, which is nice because um, it gives their actors a little bit more to do than the few lines they had in the previous game. Um, can't look at anything on ceiling, no. We do have tricorders and phasers now. Nothing unusual, Captain. Nothing to report, Captain. But it doesn't look like uh, scanning anything is really all that useful. Our highest priority is control of the sensors. We must find Spock. I'll handle it, Captain. Remember, I was a physicist when I first joined the Enterprise. Ah! Captain, look! It's that alien again. A strange alien. Mr. Sulu is beginning to worry. James Kirk bears a look of steely determination. Chekhov is very nervous right now. Walker wonders how they're going to remove the aliens this time. He seems to be ignoring us. I've seen a lot of life forms in my time, but I've never seen anything like that. Actually, I thought it looked like a spike in Devimon. No, the Devman has a much more curved back and much more distinct patterns on its skin. They could be from the same evolutionary stock. No, look at the way the second forearm juts from its thorax. They're not at all alike. I'm sure this is fascinating, but right now I have other concerns. Okay. We don't have to hurt the alien. 
unless there's no other way to save the ship. Yes, let's try to find a peaceful solution. You know, I wouldn't want that alien upset with me. In my opinion, Captain, it's the only way to save Spock in this ship. But I know how to defend myself. Transporting away is the best defense. Okay, that is um, another wrong voice line from Sulu there. He actually said he should teach Chekhov more self-defense. Nasty looking thing. Oh. Captain, what happened? It appears our alien friend likes its privacy. Don't seem like he wants us talking to him. The Cossacks have locked the door, Captain. Well, that's not very helpful. Now, is it? Can we uh, open the door? This panel doesn't seem to be working. The alien has thought of everything. We could bring down a phaser welder and force it open. We don't have the time, Mr. Sulu. Hmm. Well, that's not very useful. Can we beam back into auxiliary control? I wonder. Captain, where would you like to be transported? Send us to sick bay, Mr. Kyle. Send us to engineering, Mr. Kyle. Send us to auxiliary control, Mr. Kyle. Uh, yes, sir. Energize. Well, that worked. Let's see if we can scan this thing, find out more about it. Captain, I'm getting a sensor reading on the alien. I'm sure Dr. McCoy will find this data interesting. Oh. But then he kicks us out again. Well, even though we can beam into auxiliary control, it doesn't really help us if every time we do something, he kicks us out. I guess we could try to phaser him, but I'm not willing to do that just yet. Not until we have no alternatives. Um, one thing I think you can do in this mission, that's a bit unusual, is um, despite the fact that you're on the ship, the communicator is actually much more useful than it is normally. Kirk to Scott. Come in, Scotty. Because we can use it to talk to various members of the crew who are not with us. And they can give us status updates. Captain, I've got bad news for you. This rift is affecting the hull of the ship. Our hull integrity is dropping fast. How bad is it, Scotty? It's at 92% and dropping rapidly. According to our system specs, if it drops below 63%... Put as much powers as you can to the shields. Use them to support our hull integrity. Divert as much power as you can to the sensors. Let's find out what's causing this. Evacuate all people from the outer decks. Divert power from life support on those decks evenly to shields and sensors. I don't think it really matters what you do, what you choose here. Put as much powers as you can to the shields. Use them to support our hull integrity. I'm just gonna pick this. That will probably only buy us a few minutes, Captain. Do it, Scotty. Every minute counts. Kirk out. Kirk to Scott. Come in, Scotty. Kirk to Uhura. Come in, Lieutenant. Captain, I've moved operations to Galileo 2 shuttlecraft. I've sent a message to Starfleet Command, and I've rerouted internal communications to run from here. Lieutenant Uhura, what happens if the shuttle bay is hit by an explosion? That's one of the most vulnerable areas on the ship. That's a risk I'm prepared to take, Mr. Sulu. I've activated the shuttle's shields for protection. Good. Be prepared to evacuate the shuttle on my signal. Kirk out. Wow, Uhura seems to be really on top of things in this mission. Kirk to Scott. Come Kirk to Uhura. Kirk to Sick Bay. Bones, where are you? Jim, what the devil are you doing to the ship? I'm not the one doing it. Spock's gone, Bones. Someone took him from the ship. Some aliens that I've never seen before. If you can get me a medical scan, I might be able to find some way to combat them. Make that a priority. McCoy out. Is it my imagination, or is Dr. McCoy getting a little par crazy lately? I'd say a lot power crazed, Hikaru. <laughs> that does seem like it. Well, fortunately, we already got a medical scan, so that worked Kirk out. Kirk to Scott, come in, Scott. Kirk to Kirk to the computer. You can also access the library Kirk computer, computer 
to the, uh, with the communicator. That's the last thing we can do, which right now we have no reason to. But you can. Alright, well, since we can't do anything with the alien in um, auxiliary control, let's move on. Next location down the list is uh, sickbay. So let's check in with Dr. McCoy and give him that scan. The floor of the corridor outside the Enterprise's sick bay. The wall of the corridor outside the Enterprise's sick bay. This passage leads back to the turbo lift. This passage leads back to the turbo lift. The sick bay status indicator shows that everything is normal. A ship's communications panel. Can we use that? Kirk to Scott. Come in, Scotty. No, we can. It's exactly the same as using the communicator. Captain, the hull degradation is continuing. It's currently below 92%, but at the rate it's dropping, we have less than an hour before the ship is destroyed. Well, that's not good. Well, Jim, I leave you alone for five minutes and look at the mess you've made. Harsh, but fair, I guess. This seems pointless. This bed is currently unoccupied. This bed is currently unoccupied. This device monitors a patient's condition. It is currently inactive. Yes, because there's nobody there. That makes sense. This bed is currently un... Okay. Medical instruments line the wall of sick bay. You know, for somebody who always complains about how primitive... 20th century medicine is, I would sure be concerned if I went into a, um, you know, current day doctor's office and he had these instruments on the wall. Assorted medicines are stacked on shelves behind an enclosure. Lighting controls for sick bay. Assorted medicines are stacked. A shelf designed to hold heavy medical equipment in case of emergencies. This equipment allows Dr. McCoy to quickly synthesize chemicals and save his patients' lives. Can I turn the lights off? I like the lighting just the way it is now, thank you. I guess not. James Kirk, captain of the Enterprise, who never really liked sick bay. Well, unless you're a doctor, the only reason to go to sick bay tends to be bad news, so I can understand that. Hikaru Sulu, doing his best to remain calm in a difficult situation. Angus Walker, who remembers being in a hospital when he was a child on Earth. It doesn't... I, I was, I'm assuming most people do. Pavel Chekhov, who still has nightmares about the time in sickbay when they conducted close to 50 tests on him, when the others in his landing party were hit by advanced aging and he wasn't. I'm assuming that's a reference to an episode, and not remembering that one. Dr. McCoy who never understood why people get so nervous in sickbay. It's the safest part of the ship. I guess so. Well, Bones, it looks like we have to save Spock in order to save the Enterprise. That's a tough choice, Jim. Oh, come on. You don't hate him that much. If we keep having these random explosions, Doctor, I'm afraid your sickbay is going to be overflowing. I thought you were a helmsman, not the bearer of bad tidings. I do many things well, Doctor. He can be both. Don't worry, Doctor. I'm all right. You don't need to treat me. Then why are you here? I'm just with the Captain. I'm feeling great. You don't have to. That's fine, Lieutenant. Okay. Hello, Doctor. Nice weather, isn't it? You're a navigator, not a conversationalist, Ensign. Yes, I am. And an unappreciated navigator at that. Even though you're, like, the first person to really advance in rank, and become a uh, first officer of a different ship by the time of Star Trek II. Here's the sensor scan bolt. Jim, this says our invaders are Vorians. Vorians? But they're extinct. They died out at the time that Cochrane invented the warp drive. They were slaughtered in the Three Systems War. Jim, I know my history, but I also know my anatomy. The alien in auxiliary control is a Vorian. 
There's only one strange thing. What's that? This creature isn't capable of doing some of the things that you described. It's an ordinary Vorian. No special organs, no unusual brain patterns, nothing that traditionally suggests superhuman feats. Can you neutralize it, Bones? Actually, it's a female. And yes, I know of something that can incapacitate it without harming it, a gas mixture. You'll have to pump large quantities and auxiliary control for it to be effective, but it should work almost immediately. Here's the gas, Jim. Be careful with it. There hasn't been a Vorian in 150 years. Interesting to find a apparently extinct species here. Vorian gas engineered to paralyze a Vorian without killing it. Good, it gives us a better way of um, getting into auxiliary control rather than just trying to fire phasers at it. A variety of neutral toxin, Captain. I think it says neural toxin, not neutral. That's really on the the uh, director, isn't it? Should have corrected that instead of keeping this take. The tricorder indicates this is a neural toxin engineered to affect Vorians. Its effect on humans, aside from its smell, should be minimal. At least in the short term. Well, that's that's good to know, I guess. Although, Sulu's comment uh, does not fill me with confidence. Um, since we don't know anything about Vorians, let's see if we can look them Kirk up. Kirk to Scott. Come in, Scotty. Kirk, com Kirk to Scott. Computer. Kirk to Uhura. Okay. Come in with computer. Yep. You can't talk to uh, McCoy on the communicator if you're in sickbay. It makes sense, I guess. Alright, so let's look up the Vurians. Vurians. A race native to Vega 3 with minor psionic talents. They were exterminated by the Antoshi in the Three Systems War. I think we can also look up the Three Systems War. Three Systems War. A war in the early 22nd century between the Antoshi and the Vurians in which the Vurians were exterminated. That didn't really tell us anything that we uh, didn't already know. I don't think we can look up the Antoshi. No. Perhaps in the floppy version you can, but not in this one. Alright. Um, actually, I think we'll continue in the next video.